Welcome back, Forex fans. It's Rob again, the Forex Explorer. Back with my final episode of this Let's Play series for John Schaefer's At the Gates. And now let me explain to you why it's the last episode. I think I've probably gone over it a little bit, but I just want you to know that, first of all, I'm not a really big long Let's Play guy. I like to give glimpses, show off show, like certain things, maybe uh, even do overviews of games. And in this case, I was kind of just trying to do a tease of the game. Um, there, I, I don't know how many actual turns I've played. I played a lot, but I'm nowhere near even in the mid to late game in this game. So I don't think that this is a series that I would continue because <laughs> I just don't, I think it would last forever. I don't think it would ever end. So there have been a few questions that I really want to answer. And first of all, I want to bring it up. Uh, Adam and the Cat of Nine Tails both brought up something about my food that I did not notice at the very, very bottom. It says final surplus. 75% loss of spoilage, which is a to-do item, when stockpile contains 36 plus stored turns. So, in order to fix spoilage, I would need the briner. Let's see where the briner is. I believe, nope, it must be up here in the green. There we go, the briner. So, briners use salt to turn food into a much larger amount of food. I imagine... It also probably keeps it from spoiling. It doesn't say that specifically, but I'm going to guess it does. So, I think that's part of my issue, is that it's spoiling. So, I could probably, what I think, actually, um, I think that means that I could probably afford to have more clans right now. Because if I'm wasting all this food, it's only because it's spoiling. Which means there's extra food to be had. And I think that means I'll maybe work towards getting more clans. Increasing my clan limit. Which is uh, going to cost me 5 cloth. So the next time this caravan comes around, I'm going to buy 5 cloth. Increase my clan limit. And we're going to get some more clans going. And I'm going to do more stuff with them. Bring this guy up here. We're going to make him the guide once the guide is ready. And that also helped me continue to feed my people. And last but not least, I'm going to bring him back over so that we can make him the miner. And he's going... Actually, you know what I'm going to do with him? I'm going to make him... Wait, is he the mean, ugly, filthy guy? Yeah. He's going to rarely engage in a feud. So unfortunately, yeah, he needs to go back out here. Once I get the new clans, I'm going to make some. Um, make one of those clans a blacksmith. So another question, another question that was asked was about resource depletion. Um... Now, there are two types of... Oh, I could fortify this. There are two types of structure for each of these um, resources. So, in this case, this would have, it could have been an orchard or it could have been a plantation. And I do believe the plantation... Let's see if I can look this up here. I do believe the plantation never runs out. Structures. Let's go to structure. Um, nope. One of four, I believe. So constructing a timber or a permanent one. So you can have an advanced permanent one with stone block structures. Stone block structures are incredibly useful as they last forever and can even have apprentices assigned to them to increase their production. But they're quite expensive, so don't expect to have any until at least turn 50. So to answer Adam's question about resources depleting once you build these permanent structures with the stone then you no longer have a depletion issue of course i do believe it does the same thing as in it degrades but the degradation the degrading uh period is much longer and it also i don't think significantly worsens but i'm not exactly sure because it's only, i've only built one plantation before and i don't remember what it did and it wasn't long before I did that, or long after I did that, that I ran out of food and everybody died anyway. So I didn't really know much about how the rest of that game went. Uh, yeah, so let's make this guy a miner. He's going to build a mine here. Once I've done that, I'm going to move my civilization to here because I do want to get these stones here, and that'll help me be, uh, build stone blocks, which will help me build more permanent structures. So that is a good thing. 
in my opinion. So let's go ahead and come on over here uh, and and make him a miner. And what I want to do is probably okay. And then there's another question too. What happens if I train a clan and a discipline? So I've realized, I've learned, is that you can actually train. And I, again, this is something I, I should have looked at. I just never really thought to. But you can train clans and disciplines to, to level them up, basically, with parchment. So in this case, I needed one parchment to... And it's created from the skin of animals. So that would be another reason to have pasture. But you can use that to basically level them up. I don't know how how difficult or if that's basically like a if that's a scaling cost, but right now it's only one parchment to go from level two to level four. So um, I'm gonna make him. Uh, I'm not gonna make him anything. All right, so there's that. So that was something I didn't even think about to look at, and I appreciate the Cat of Nine Tails also asking about that question because I really honestly never thought to, to even I don't know why <laughs> just just never thought to click on that which is ridiculous so you can train them and make them better and I wonder if that means like with this oh what is it I have a level seven he's the one that's returning back to become the guide I would like to see how much it would cost in parchment to train him maybe to level 10 because I know level 10 is where they become better Right, so let's come here. Oh, I didn't mean to do that, my bad. Come over here, mouse over this, and then once the mouse, the mouse is so here, upon reaching level 10 in disciplines, a clan can purchase one upgrade for free. I don't know what those upgrades are. I'm assuming it's the upgrade for like the things that we're, we're upgrading through our profession research like the um gather upgrades stuff like that so i bet you yeah i bet you it's just that which is cool i guess enough i don't know if it's really worth it because if that's the only thing it's doing purchasing uh increased levels really it doesn't seem like it'd be cost effective because it's it's probably less expensive to just train them but then again if it's only one parchment to train him from level 7 to level 10, then clearly that would be the better way to go. So we'll see. Another question that was brought up. Oh, look at this. So this is something I mentioned about uh, maybe an episode or two again ago about feuding. And there are now, there's a feud. So let's look at what's going on. Um, it looks like Bola... And Belmar are feuding. So it uh, looks like the mouse over description is a little messed up here. So it looks like these two are feuding. And right now, because Bola is three, level three and a minor, I would really hate to discipline him. And especially since Belmar is doing nothing for me right now. So the thing is, if I don't do anything, they're going to continue to bicker and they're going to basically become an issue for each other. They're going to continue to degrade each other's uh, mood and it becomes an issue basically, period. So I have to punish somebody eventually. I'm not going to punish them just yet because there's no point in punishing them just yet. Although it might be better to punish them now, now that he's not trained in anything because what happens is when I punish them, you can see here when I mouse over, when a clan is punished, it is stripped of its profession and discipline, and his mood is permanently reduced by one level. So I can I can just go ahead and punish them now, I think. And I don't really think that's going to be an issue, because they're not doing anything for me. And the longer I let it fester, the more Bola is going to have an issue with it. And I don't want Bola to have an issue with it, because they're going to be my miners. So we're going to go ahead. Yep, so they're not going to like that very much. And now they're going to be permanently negative one which is upset which kind of sucks so that means their resource production decreased by 10 percent their morale is decreased by 10 percent everything is decreased by 10 percent and their experience is get is reduced by one quarter that is why you try to avoid having clans around each other that might start feuds 
Because that stuff happens, and that's not good. No one likes it. No one at all. All right, so these guys are going to be an issue. I really would like to take them out. Let's see what they're... Yeah, they're... Um... They're digging in, which means I would need probably two of these guys. My, yeah, I would be bloodied and sore. And because they're they're plus 50 from terrain and plus 100% from digging in, they would be difficult. I'd need two archers at least. So we're not going to do that just yet. All right, so we're going to get rid of this. Clans are idle. I'm going to go ahead and construct the path here. Settlement is idle. They're not gonna be they're just they're not gonna like me. So if they're gonna be forever kind of gimped, I wonder what I should do with them. Maybe they could be No, can I what do I do with flax again? They can they can turn it into cloth. And cloth is important. So I might actually do that. They don't have any issue with I'm going to go ahead and train them in agriculture and then have them start gathering this until I can move my my uh, encampment up there. So that sounds like a plan. But anyway, to get to a question, see, now Clan Bullet is happy because I did give them their wish. Um, I basically have... Um, I punished that other clan, so they liked that I did that, and now they're going to be happy. Which I think actually increases their... Yep. Everything about that is good for them. Which, again, see? That's where the choice is. Like, this was clearly the more important clan to me. So now, what's great about the fact that I did what they wanted me to do is that they're going to actually perform better for me. Which I'm, I think is great. I'm sure the other clan doesn't think so, but I think so. Alright, so I can now train guides, which is great. Let's go ahead and start studying another profession. And what we can do is, we've already got blacksmith upgrade 1. We've got miner upgrade 1. What is miner upgrade 2? Spend 5 boards. I don't have boards going yet. What about... Um, don't have any salt, so briners wouldn't make any sense. But you know what may make sense is to get a wood carver going. But that would, I think that's actually three, that costs three, yeah, three timber. And that's basically all the timber I'm getting. And I haven't quite, I don't have the issue with too few clans yet because I'm not, I haven't increased my clan limit yet. So what we can do, what can we do? <laughs> There's so much to do. It's just. Uh, sometimes a little overwhelming to consider what I need to do. Uh, we do need to make the stones. So where, I think it's the dredgers. No, it's not the smelters. Um, trying to remember who makes the stone from the, uh, like the stone blocks from the, st maybe stone carvers. There we go. That's what it is. Nope, that's not it. Uh, block cutters. <laughs> that would be it. So block cutters produce stone blocks from stone. Once we get our encampment over there to where the stone is, we're going to need that, definitely. So we're going to research that. Settlement is idle. I know you're not very happy with me. So I'm going to continue to try. Okay, one to three is going to cost parchment. So let's close. Train and profession. And we're going to make you a... Ooh, I don't know. Do I need a harvester? Or a reaper? I need a reaper. All right. So they're going to become a reaper. There we go. And they're going to come up here and start reaping this flax up here. All right, so now before I get distracted, this time around, I want to talk about the differences. There's a question that was asked about what is so special about At The Gates. And I think, okay, and I'm not trying to sound like a smartass, but I think it's been pretty clear through this four, four, four or five part video series what's so different about this game. But in case it's not super obvious, it's, this game is very player versus environment 
oriented. Like this game isn't about like the other empires. I mean, surely they're going to play a part. And especially as you, um, as this game develops more and some of the diplomacy is implemented, the other clans are going to be a bigger part. And I, I haven't seen them expand too much. So I don't know if maybe that's just part of their AI structure right now. They're just not meant to expand too much. But basically the game is about you surviving and building this like very small empire or very small like clan really to becoming this like giant thriving empire. And in order to do so, you're, you're utilizing clans instead of workers, instead of building these buildings, you know, like it's, it's more about the clans and about using those clans to obtain resources and survive more than it is about building this giant empire and, you know, becoming this all powerful people. You're, you're not really progressing through a technological age at all through this. You're, you know, you're, you're basically in the Roman times. I mean, you're BC, you know, and there's not much going on. There's not much tech progression in this game, but there is like capability progression. So you start off by being very incapable of anything really and by the time you're all said and done with this game, you're very capable of doing quite a bit. You should be able to take on the Romans. And that's something that is very different, very unique. In fact, it's kind of, kind of like colonization. If anyone's ever played the original colonization, I don't really like to think too much of the Civilization Four colonization version because I don't think it was that great. But the original colonization, you didn't really move through a, a technological progression. You stuck with what you had and you just basically became more capable you uh you got resources you found resources you made things from those resources that you found and you became capable enough to take out the the british the f french the spanish empires you know that the, they would send all their forces eventually you declare independence and you would fight against your homeland and depending on how well you did up until that point would depend on or would really settle whether or not you were capable of of winning your independence. I think that's a lot like this game. It, this game is a little bit more nuanced. There's a lot more going on. In the other game, a lot of that stuff was happening within your cities, and you could build more cities too within colonization. Whereas here, a lot of it is, is certainly outside of your city because uh, all these things are happening. Like I'm building structures outside of my encampment, and... Most importantly, too, there's only one encampment ever. So you're you're moving this encampment and you're fortifying your various structures to, you know, grow your control zone. But it's not like it is not like any other forex game where you would normally just colonize and and use that that new colony to expand your colony zone or your your control zone. So there's a lot of things that are very different about this game. I like it. I'm really enjoying it. I see shortcomings. I do. I, I mean, as someone who's enjoying it, I can see where there are shortcomings. And it really, I'm hoping I don't get to the point where they bother me before those are fixed. But I have faith in John Schaefer now where I didn't before. Because before, if you'd asked me this four months ago, I would have told you this game was <laughs> dead on arrival and would never be anything any good. And having spent 25 uh, so-ish hours and real like 15 to so 20 maybe hours of real gameplay, I I have been enjoying myself immensely, way more than I thought I would, because I do like the nuances. I do like figuring out where I'm going to get these resources. I do like finding, you know, great things on my map as I explore with my my surveyors, and I like you know using these supply chains and gaining the ability to build permanent structures and so on and so forth. It's a, it's a fun game. So if he can shore up what's wrong, and I think I'm going to go into that in my review, you can expect a full written review on the forexplorer.net probably on release day because I have had a lot of time. I'm going to continue to have more time. In fact, after this Let's Play series, I'm going to play this game as far as I can play it until maybe possibly I win. I don't know. It's a good start. There's nothing really keeping me from doing too well other than the Huns being right here. So, I mean, I could do well. I, I might, hopefully, will do well. And my idea is to have a full written review of the game from where it is at 1.0 on the 
on on release day, which is January 23rd. So check out the forexplorer.net for that, you know, set your calendars, whatnot. And I might even do a like a one-off episode to show you the updated version of this game, maybe, you know, 50 turns from now, a couple days before release or something. So hopefully that has answered all your questions. I hope I have. I'm going to continue playing for a little bit. And then, like I said, this is not a permanent Let's Play, so unfortunately this will probably be my last episode. Okay, so let's go. Iron, Iron Mine version 2. You're going to need 20 stone blocks. It doesn't say anything about its permanence. But it, it obviously that's what it does. So it, it does... I mean, that's what it said in the uh, help guide. Would it be that uh, the Iron Mine version 2 is actually a permanent structure? So I would never have to worry about, you know, the, the depletion. See, it doesn't say anything about the depletion. As you roll over or you scroll over Iron Mine here, it does talk about depleting resources and eventually, you know, being 50% of the normal rate after the deposit has been depleted. Whereas in the Iron Mine version 2, it says nothing about that. So I imagine the Iron Mine version 2 would not have an issue with anything depletion, depleting. So clearly, the idea would be to get these things going as fast as possible. Oh, you know what? That's a large stone deposit. Before we build this, maybe we could actually build a stone deposit or a stone mine. I can build a stone mine, right? That's something we do. Let's make sure of this. Oh, I meant to mouse over and oh, come on, stop! Ah, oh, Lordy. Okay, I see stone quarries. All right, there. So I can make a stone quarry, and I'm going to do that. This is great. I am glad I'm, I noticed this. So I'm going to make a stone quarry, and I'm going to try to build a permanent structure here. So that, because I have a nice little iron deposit there. And when I have the block cutters going, and and a couple and in a turn when I can increase my clan limit, this is gonna work out. I'm excited about it. What am I gonna do with these guys? Um, well, there's not much else to survey at the time. I might come all the way over here. You know, the paths don't really increase your distance traveled very well I wonder if there's like a a later version of that maybe like roads or something but yeah it would be great to maybe bring him all the way down here and see what's down here without getting taken out and if I do get taken out by one of the bandits that'll be fine too Alright, caravan has arrived, so I'm going to make sure to do what I need to do with the caravan, which I've already forgotten what that's supposed to be. Um, I do need cloth. That's a good start. So let's look at cloth. There's 10 of them, so I'm going to buy... Ooh, lordy, I'm low on money. So let's go ahead and sell some iron. Maybe even... Yeah, that'll be enough. And with that, I should be able to buy five cloth. One, two, three, four, five. Come in here now and increase my clan limit. There you go. All right, so now I can have up to 18 clans. With all the food that I'm producing, it should not be any extra. There shouldn't be an issue because there's not going to be all that surplus that I have that's spoiling should just go to feeding new clan members. Hopefully this works out. Hopefully that's the way it's supposed to, it's, it's going to work out. This guy, I'm going to go ahead and have him be a guide. And he's going to now increase by 50% all of my foragers. So that would in increase them. Uh, there's probably only a couple of turns left of this. Yeah, it's only two turns. Do I see anything else that I can forage? Uh, I might be able to, 
I'll probably end up bringing her back and training her as a reaper and forging up here or reaping this up here. Or not those there's bee right there. Okay. How hard are these guys? Are these dug in? They don't appear to be dug in, so you might might just meet the wrath of this guy. And we're gonna keep coming down here. I'm gonna build a trail off that right there. And we'll keep going. There we go. Alright, this is a good plan. I like it. Can we build a mine yet? Nope, stone quarry. It's going to be another two turns before we can do that. Alright, so we're only... Yeah, we're almost done with this bee's hive. So, what may end up being best for me is okay we're still so stone quarry version 2 again it doesn't have anything about the depletion so this mu yeah that must be the case that's uh, that's something I've never actually really looked into I wonder what this was wheat farm a wheat farm does not have a flooded it doesn't know it doesn't have a flooded art so <laughs> looks like a, a present for now all right, we're going to have to wait for our timber to be finished. And now this guy should be, yeah, he stays here. He will stay in this this town forever now since he is now a guide. And I should see what was three becomes, I don't know, five this next time around. Okay, I I mean, so this used to be here. This little uh, move skip pack up here used to be below this. I really want it to come back there. I'm going to tell John about it. Finish turn. All right, so we can now build the stone quarry. We're going to do that. She's now, okay, so she had four point something. So definitely increased from the guide. He's going to come up here and, ooh, it's going to be a tough fight. There's not going to be a clear winner with this one. 4.4 to 4.4. So hopefully uh, he might win because of the terrain advantage, but we'll see. Because it would be nice to take that logging camp. Yes, it would. So we'll see about that. Go ahead and skip. And in 11 turns... Okay, we do need some fame then. We're going to need some fame. So hopefully with the logging camp, we'll gain an additional uh, free timber. We might look at building another logging camp as soon as possible. But with the new logging camp, we'll have three additional timber. And that way we can actually do the wood carver so that we can gain some fame and get that going. Fame, of course, will allow us to recruit clans faster than we are, which is going to take forever. Logging camp has degraded and will soon shut down. That sucks. All right, so now I'm only gaining plus 1.5 timber, and it'll be another 24 turns before it's completely exhausted. Another good reason to try to take this guy out. And you can construct a path. We're gonna construct a path all the way, all the way down. In fact, ooh, we could just construct a path all the way down here to just pick up that patch of berries after she comes up here and forges all the bees' hive nest, honey stuff, <laughs> whatever it's called, the stuff the bees make. All right. Oof, that's a decent little bandit raider there. I don't like it. An orchard's degraded. And now only produce 2.5 food for 24 turns. So that's not good either. No, sir. Oh, please win. Please win. Please win. Okay, nobody won. Which makes sense. Skip. Oh, man, this is scary. I don't like this guy coming around. Hopefully he doesn't start taking out some of my stuff. He's moving. 
Till the Huns has a message for me. Be aware that I have my I'll have my eye out. See? That sucks. I hate you. That sucks. Very much so. Cause I don't need that shiitake. I just don't need it. What happens if I fight? No, that's not good. Okay. Am I going to win this? No, I'm not going to win this. Alright, so I need to not fight it. I'm going to dig in. And I wonder if that will increase my life. Because I need to gain my power and my health back. But I don't like this guy here. This is not good. In fact, I don't even know where he came from. I hate the fact that this thing is here. Uh, I don't have any clans to make... Uh, okay, I can heal with oil and cloth. I might be buying oil and cloth with the next turn and see or the next time the caravan comes around and then hope that they need to be back here in order to heal them. So I'm going to bring them back and heal him, and then attack this guy before he does anything. Hopefully an archer does well against that. I don't like where he's going. Where is he moving? Alright, a caravan has arrived. How much do I need? Let's see. I need five oil, five cloth. I'm not going to have enough money... I have quite a bit of iron, so I can sell 10. I can also sell some stone. There we go. And then five more cloth. One, two, three, four, five. And then oil. Oh, wow. That's expensive. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Bring him back ASAP. Oh, look. When you construct... Oh, I don't think I constructed a path. That's why. <laughs> I was like, hey, look. Constructing a path on the, the river doesn't show anything. But I don't think I did. So that was my fault. All right. What are you doing, man? I don't like you here. Alright, he's gone back down. That's good. Wow, okay. All this stuff's going going down. You can now train block, cut, block cutters, which is great. Because my stone quarry is... Oh, wow. 0. 0.625. That's fantastic. So, once I have one of the new clans, I might... I don't know. There's just so much I need to do. Alright, did I... Am I healing at all? I'm not healing at all. Alright, let's try this. I don't know if this is going to help, but we're going to... We're just... Really, I just don't want that godforsaken bandit to take out any of my stuff because I've worked so hard for it I really don't want it to go away but they've come back they've gone back so I'm not sure if they're gonna try to raid me or not I do need this lumber mill so I kinda wanna just heal him no move points remaining alright skip here and then maybe just take him out mmm I don't know what can we do to upgrade our archers here Oh, I didn't mean to do that, but I do want to see. So, it's 10 weapons to upgrade archers to plus 2 power. That's actually a good thing to do. An iron mine has degraded and will soon shut down. So, now they're only doing plus 5, 1.5 iron. Yeah, I really need to work on making more permanent structures for sure. Heal, no point, no point, why not? We're not healing, so I don't know why I'm I'm losing heal my move points. 
Can I not forge? Why? Okay, it's too cold to forage. Alright. What about coming down here to forge there? How much flax do I have? 34! My god. So I can do weaver after archer. Oh, I, I should do weaver now, because that's going to help me now. So weaver is probably down here somewhere. Weaver. I like it. Let's do that. Can I construct a path? All right, I cannot yet. Oh man, what do you have to discuss? You are a villain and should be recognized as such. Leaders announce this world, which will now affect other how leaders behave to you in the future. Uh, that's not cool. I received a gift from Rome. Five food. Thank you. Thank you very much. Problem is, is that I'm now negative three. Is that because of the winter? That has to be because of the winter. But I feel like with all that food that was being spoiled, I should still be in the plus. Plus 2.5 from fruit, plus 4.95 from honey. And I'm guessing I'm not hunting anymore. No, I'm hunting. So why, so why can't... Because my supply isn't critical. So I won't be hunting this turn. I can upgrade him. I'm going to. And then I'm going to heal him. So he'll be healed next turn. The winter months are, are cruel. Whoa, what's going on over here? Horse archer. Please don't mess with my guy. Oh, wow. Uh, I guess an orchard, when it's being flooded, doesn't... Yeah, just like this one over here. It does not have its own art yet. Okay, so let's bring him back over here and fight. It's the only way. And you, you're going to come down here. And we're just going to build a path from there. And I hope he's not becoming offensive towards me, because that would be bad for me. Can now train weavers. Um, let's get him up here. Can we forage? We cannot, because it's too cold. So you'll encamp. And construct a path, and we'll come back up this way. Alright, so this is what I'm talking about. It's getting a little bit more difficult. It's definitely getting a little bit more difficult. So, studying a profession, uh, block cutter, what do I need? 20 tools, additional, additional, no, I don't need to do that. What does a potter do? Huh, look at that, I didn't know that. Um... Hmm, let's see what we're going to do now. Uh, what's a brick? Oh, okay. Coal. Brick makers use coal to produce stone blocks. And I have a lot of coal. There's just not much I can do here with any of that other stuff. So I really wish I had briners. But there's just so many things I need, man. Uh, Huntsman greatly increases the amount of meat. Watchman, what am I going to do with that? I don't know. I could actually do a Watchman up here instead, instead of moving, but I just really think that I need to move my encampment. So Lancers, what about Spearmen? They look pretty powerful. Spearmen are the frontline warriors of out the gates. Although feared by bandits, they're outclassed by cavalry on flat ground. They're more capable in rough terrain and much cheaper. So, how much... They cost 20 weapons. 
but they have 10 power, whereas my archers have 4 power. Wow, I'm going to do spearmen and see about getting weapons going. All right. Let's go ahead and attack. Did not look like it went well. That sucks. Why are we unhappy? Oh no. When did you guys start fe feuding? Oh wait, no, that's the other one. That was the other one. That's right. That was the one I already, I already punished. Okay, so in camp here, come back up. Nope. Move up one and construct the path. We've only got one more turn for another clan, which is fantastic because I need more clans. Something fierce. All right, what what are we in? We're December. All right. Wow, that is a lot of snow. Okay. All right, so if I attack with this guy, am I going to win? I think I might actually win. Let's see if we can do this. Please win. Please win. All right, I definitely have more life than the other one, so that's good. That's a good thing. New clan has joined. Let's take a look to see. What oh, I did not mean to move there. Move there. There we go. Construct a path there. New clan has joined. What do we have? Resource production increased by half. Resource production from constructor screen. Oh, this is the kind of guy I like. All right. Never has desires. Never has infused. See, this is this is a great clan. Now, what do I need the most with these? I'm gonna go ahead and say that I need. Oh God, it's so hard to say. <clears throat> I'm going to train him in, oh, I don't know. I think I'm going to do block cutters. Oh, but I need, I need tools. See, this is the other thing. I need tools so bad. I might go ahead and do him and make him a blacksmith because we've just had tool issues from after tool issue. So we're going to train him in metal smithing and then we're going to make him a blacksmith. And that way we can start creating our own tools and start getting some of this stuff done. Man, the snow is still here. All right, I think I'm going to be able to beat them off now this time. Yes. Capture it. Fantastic. All right. And camp. How's our logging camp? It's occupied. Okay, so I have to wait six turns before I can actually gain timber from it. But then I'll have Clan Barra. which is Northman, so he likes snow tiles, and he's corrupt. So his production is reduced by a quarter, but still I'll have another logging camp, which is great. I'll take that. I will take that. And you, you've been trained, so let's go ahead and make you a blacksmith. It'll take three turns. Then I can start producing my own tools. My very own tools. All right, dig in. Just in case these guys decide they want to attack. Oh, I have a message from the Saxons. Hello, I don't like you, so watch yourself. That's not cool at all. I don't see the Saxons. Oh, I forgot about this guy. I totally forgot about him. Oh, my God. I'll wait until he is not... This supply is critical, and that's because it is, what, February? But once his supply is no longer critical, I'm going to go ahead and uh, have him start re-engaging in the Discovery world. Totally forgot about him. Poor guy. Fantastic. All right, so we're out of... We're back in late February. We're still able to maintain food even with an additional two clans or one clan. And 
All right, we're in a better spot. We're in a better place for sure. Logging camp still going to take another four turns. Our blacksmith's going to be another one turn, and then we'll start producing tools, which is going to be so great. I like it. You shouldn't have any issues anymore, so let's start moving you. And you only need probably one more turn before you can start forging again. I might just say skip. Let's go ahead and finish turn. Clan Loom is now a blacksmith, so I will begin producing four tools. <laughs> yes. Yes. Four tools a turn. I feel like I'm just going to be able to upgrade everybody. It's going to be great. Nope. I didn't mean to do that. No. What am I doing? No. I did not do that. I mean, I guess I did, but I didn't mean to. All right. What else can I upgrade with tools? Upgrade this guy. Yeah, I can upgrade with that guy. That's going to be great. I could probably upgrade this guy with tools. Oh, this is going to be so good. Then when the next one comes around, I'll probably do the stone cutter so that I can make permanent structures and stop losing everything forever and always. All right. I can actually... I don't have boards. I do have boards. I have five boards. Where did you come from? I'm going to use them. Five boards to make even more tools. And you can finally forge again. Yes. So hopefully we can get back into the green with with food. Come back over here. Construct a path. And skip here. All right. Good to go. Oh. Come over here. Move. Oh, no, 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 no. I should be able to move right there. Why would it go around? Whatever. That's some weird pathing. Weird pathing. All right, so I'm, I'm I am back in the positive with food. A caravan has arrived. What do I need to do here? Keep bringing him over here and construct another path. I said go there. Oh, what are you doing? You're painful. Painful. Um, what do I need that I... Oh, there's a bandit there. I'm trying to think of what I need to do with the caravan. I might just upgrade it. Yeah, I think I'm just going to upgrade it. <sighs> There's so much I could do here. So, if I... I don't need to extend the borders here. Anywhere that I know of. I do probably need to extend the borders here eventually. But I want this to be a permanent mine. So... 77 stone man oh man what am i gonna do i i just don't see any reason to do anything different so i'm just gonna leave the caravan as is i can buy stone blocks four for 48 now what if i sell some of the stone i have because it's selling for three so 10 there you go i still have 57 but I need 20 stone blocks, which is expensive. See, I definitely need to make my own stone blocks. But at least I have 116 gold now, which I could use to do something, I'm sure. Just don't know what that something would be. <laughs> uh, maybe, no, I don't need the salt. Because I don't have a briner. Um, I don't need cloth. The parchment, I could buy just to see how that works. So I'll buy 10. And maybe I'll start upgrading some of these guys. Like, I'll train and discipline aren't here. And 9 to 11 is going to cost me 8 parchment. 
but I can do it. We'll see what that happens. We'll see what that does. Alright, so I've done it. Now he's level 10. So, with level 10 means he can purchase upgrade, but I don't see... Is there no upgrade to that, maybe? That's probably what it is. There's no upgrade to... Oh, there is an upgrade. Oh, and I just purchased it. For free. Okay, cool. Alright, so now if I spend 10 tools, he's going to be even better at... Increase by another half. Wow, okay, so that's great. If I use 10 tools to level them up, which I don't see the ability to do so, maybe it has to wait till next turn. Or like, oh, okay, no, I haven't done it yet. All right, I'm confused. Clearly, I'm in a confused state. So, let's talk about this game for a second. Um, clearly, there's stuff to do. There's art assets missing. It is a very tough game. You can see, even though I feel like I've done a decent job of systematically making the right buildings and trying to get my supply line set up, it's still difficult. I think that even with the stone stuff, I'm still going to have a hard time. I was lucky enough to get this, and it's going to take another turn to get that um, coming back to me, but there's just a lot going on. So... This is where my critical thinking comes into place. I'm going to do a little bit of that just for a brief moment. But what I think is, okay, first of all, John and the group needs to absolutely get the missing artwork in there absolutely as fast as possible. Uh, the pathing definitely needs some help. Um, it's sometimes atrocious. The diplomacy is in serious need of help, love. Uh, really anything because right now there is none like this is all I can do I can look to see what they look like I can declare war and make alliance I, and making alliance is difficult because I don't have any way of increasing my leverage there's literally nothing I can do so diplomacy is absolutely 100% one of the first things I would do if I were John after let's assume that he gets all the art assets in there before the game releases, which he better. I think that's important. Um, and after he gives it some time to like fix some of the bugs that are inevitably going to come out of that, um, I think the game would be in a pretty good place as far as a player versus environmental game as long as nothing else pops up that I'm not seeing. And I would then move to fixing and working on the diplomacy hardcore like it just needs to happen forex game is i mean diplomacy is so important um there's clearly gonna be some balance issues too i would think that after some time with the game a lot more people than just me and maybe a handful of others are actually playing it right now although a lot of people own it already um there's gonna be some issues that i haven't seen some balance issues there might be exploits that i don't know of and those need to get fixed too. So that would be my first, my, my first guess would be that that kind of stuff would be the first on their agenda, the bug fixing and the balance issues. And then from there, diplomacy needs to be like numero uno. Um, but with diplomacy and some other fixes and making sure that your turn times are a little, you know, they keep turn times within reasonable uh, amount. I, dude, I'm telling, I'm having a lot of fun with this damn game, and that's saying something because I really, I see the rough edges, I see the dumb shit like, the you know the present box that appears over here and over here when it's flooded and stuff like that. I see that stuff, but I still enjoy this game, and I've lost a few times and I still enjoy this game. So, th those are things that I can't really say about a lot of other games, um, but I'm just hoping that that John steps up and does right by this game because this game has more potential than just about any other game I've experienced or played in a long time. And that's saying something. 
for me, colonization is on my top. If you ever go to the, you need to go to the floorexplorer.net. I've got a leaderboard of, of Forex games of all time for me. Um, some of you guys clearly won't agree with me, but colonization's way up there, number four or five, because colonization was a fantastic game. It was a great Forex game. I played the ever living crap out of that game. And this game reminds me so much of a modern version of that with various and different ideas, really, but still. Uh, it's got a, it's got its own, it's got a, a, the soul of it in a way. And if it can take what it has here and run with it and polish it, ah, man, I just, if it doesn't happen, it would be one of the greatest disappointments for me in a long time because there's so much to like about this game, but there are some shortcomings and I will write about them. And I hope to get to the mid and late game and see what that's like because hopefully those are short up too, and hopefully those are good to go. Or else that would be else that would be something else that I would have some issue with. But really, there's just so much that I'm enjoying about it. So thank you so much for watching this five part series. I hope that I've given you a good glimpse of what At the Gates is all about. Clearly, it's a game that is changing forex for what I think is for the better. There's a lot of stuff going on. A lot of moving parts that I think really engage the brain, engage my my strategic and tactical mind, and maybe I'm not so great at that stuff, but that's fine. But it really is so different from every other forex that I've played that I'm just really enjoying it. I'm really enjoying it. It has elements of Thea the Awakening and Thea the Shattering, which are both games that if you haven't checked out, I would definitely check out because Thea the Awakening is doing a lot of things very much like this. Um, it's more fantasy based and it has a lot more like questing and stuff and it's not quite like this. There's a lot more crafting and stuff and uh, that may not be for everybody. But in this in this realm, there's only a few games that are even kind of close to this game and both of them being Thea and Colonization. Otherwise, this game is very much one of its own and I can't wait to see it evolve. I just hope that John gives it the love it needs, the love that it deserves and that we uh we talk about out the gates for a long time because i i really just see myself playing it for a very long time thanks again for watching guys if you have any questions please leave them on my blog theforexplorer.net or you can leave them here on youtube otherwise like i said i'll come back in 40 turns and give you a quick glimpse of what i've done hopefully i'm still around hopefully i haven't died off and you know, I'll have a full review for this game January 23rd because I will play as much as I can until then to get a good feel for what's right and wrong about it. So stay tuned. And until then, thanks for watching. Keep exploring.